Like most nights out for us, we never get a chance to really sit down and enjoy our meal. You're yapping with this person, you're yapping with that, you're working the entire room. On the way home, you're saying to yourself, honey, are you hungry? Starving. Starving. <laughs> we're both starving, and wait till you see what we're gonna cook up for you tonight. They're three amazing dishes. Our version of an onion soup, papo di cipolla, incredible. A little Val di Fontina mm. on top. Mm, the spaghetti on Matriana. And for dessert, some Zambuca soaked dried fruit. But I don't know about you, but you look way too nice huh, to be having a little spaghetti. Why don't we go change? And the last thing I want to do is cook spaghetti in a canali tuxedo. <laughs> I don't even know. I love it. Michael Chiarella's Napa is funded by... Sunkist. Fresh citrus taste. Cooking with Sunkist throughout the day. Sunkist. Our promise. Your inspiration. By... Salton. Innovative products for a healthy today and tomorrow. Bringing you the Juice Man Juice Extractors designed from the Salton family. Providing products to help people make choices for healthier living. By All Clad Metal Crafters. All Clad is bonded construction. All Clad is functional design. All Clad is professional equipment. All Clad is a state of mind. And by Wolf, makers of ovens, cooktops, and ranges to fuel a passion for cooking. I don't know what you guys get hungry for after midnight, but for me as a Southern Italian, a calabrese, I like it spicy. And one of the things you want to think about about late night eating is you want it very full of flavor, but not too filling. You know, big night out, you want a little more romance, but you need a little flavor first to feel a little contentness. Now to start this pasta is very, very simple. This is one of those dishes that in the time it takes the pasta to cook, I'll have the sauce totally done. This really relies on your pantry. And I always tell people that the depth of your pantry is in direct proportion to the ease and the quality of a late night meal you can do. So pasta, buy good pasta, please. Just buy good pasta. You see this pasta? Every time I sh I'll show you, this pasta has a texture to it. It's gonna have a toothiness to it that's gonna be fantastic. Nice texture, it goes in. Pasta goes in the pot, a little bit of salt. Okay, we'll give it a minute and then we'll give it a stir. Now this dish starts with a little pancetta. Pancetta is, actually, let me take that back. This dish starts with a glass of wine. It's late night, so you end up having a glass of wine, thinking about your evening, having a little reminiscence. Pancetta is unsmoked bacon. Okay, just Italian unsmoked bacon. We had it sliced and we put it in the freezer a little bit because it's really easy to cut this way. All you do is cut them into some lardons like this. We're gonna caramelize this pancetta in a little bit of olive oil right in my hot saute pan. Olive oil goes in Pancetta, and we're gonna render this out. We want them deeply caramelized. Once these begin to brown, we're gonna add some onions. But you can't just add any onion with something like this. You want an onion that's gonna flow with the pasta that's cut about the same length. It's the same kind of cut I'm gonna use for my uh, papo chipola, my onion soup later. So, so check this out. See this right here? That's the stem end of the onion. All right, that's what we want to keep intact a little bit. So you cut it from here. And that's the direction that you want to go. And you cut these straight down. Now I like them thin. This is what we want for a finished product. So I give it a couple notches right here. And then straight down we go. 
Once we get towards the end, we're going to turn them over and finish it up. That's enough onion for this. So we're going to give this pancetta about five minutes to caramelize and then add the onion. You see that just as the pancetta begins to caramelize like that, we want the onions to go in. If we put the onions in too soon, these would boil. And you ever had boiled bacon? Not good. Not good at all. Now these two need to kind of make a sofrito for about 15 minutes by themselves. This is the holy trinity of our flavor here. This is the basis for this entire sauce is gonna happen right here. If you rush it too much, you got a big problem. You got onion on your breath, you know. If we cook them really slow, they're gonna sweeten up and be fantastic. Like always, when we add onions, we're gonna sprinkle in a little bit of salt to bring out some of the moisture so they all sweat nicely together. That's exactly what we're looking for right there. You see that? The onions are caramelized and sweet. The pancetta is rendered all the way through. Perfect. Now we're going to continue to build this. Now this, like most of the foods that I do, are really constructing flavor one layer at a time. So as a good calabrese, I need a little picante. I need some spice in there. So we have some chili flakes. Now rather than putting the chili flakes at the end, all you would do is taste heat on the top. Now we're actually going to build the chili flake flavor in. Let it render out through the oil for a second. A little bit of vinegar. I love the freshness and the layer that the vinegar gives you. Now you want the vinegar to reduce a little bit so it doesn't taste like you have a salad dressing in your pasta. Just a little bite of acid. Again, this richness of the pancetta and the tartness of the vinegar are fantastic together. I'm gonna let those boil down. Some prezzemolo, some fresh Italian parsley. The flat leaf stuff, please. A good amount. This is an ingredient. It's, it's not a condiment. It doesn't get sprinkled on afterwards. It needs to cook in. In the pomodoro passata, this past tomato. Now you buy plum tomatoes and then pass them yourself. They're much, much better. And these just need to cook for just a few minutes to bring all the flavors together. That's it. You see this concentration of flavor? That's what we're looking for. All you need is a bite of this. Your entire mouth's going to fill up with flavor. Now, if you're wondering if it's too thick, it is too thick. But rather than using chicken broth or anything fancy, we're going to use what any good Italian owner would use is a little pasta water. That pasta water is going to bring all of these flavors together. Every time I make pasta with you guys, I tell you the same thing. Cook the pasta a little bit. Let it cook together. I brought them out firm. We're going to let the pasta cook in this mixture and get all the flavor from inside the pot to inside the pasta. Very, very key. Now, I made enough pasta for an, you know, one Italian couple <laughs> or uh, two American couples. Great for breakfast, though. Okay. Mmm. Look at that. I'm gonna turn this guy right out. The reason I'm serving it in a big platter like this, the idea is that we're eating off one platter. Romantic. Well, she's changing. They come out. I got pasta done already. I'm a hero. If you live in a community filled with winemakers and chefs, you're going to find really good wine and food at social events. And if an event benefits one of the Napa Valley's many charitable organizations, you'll find some of Napa's culinary heroes all pitching in to help.
This is it. This is the one day of the year that all of Napa comes out, the Napa Valley Wine Auction. Can you imagine? Thousands of people come from all over the world for one thing, to bid on some of Napa Valley's finest, most premium red wines. Lots that you just can't imagine. And the cause? Everything great. Hospitals, all the charities throughout Napa Valley in Northern California. Since I've moved here in 1986, we had a chance and a blessing to participate in raising over a hundred million dollars. So all of these people and all of their jets come in here to lay off a little cash for things that we really care about. Because Napa is all about, as it takes, it gives back twice as much all along the way. The Health Center, the actual name is the Napa Valley Vintners Community Health Center, uh, really uh, grew out of the, of the wine auction. You might call it an anchor tenant, if you will, uh, that's occupying 50% of the space is Clinical Lay, Community Health Clinical Lay. At Clinical Lay provides primary health care to uh, children and adults of all ages and uh, we also have some dr a drop-in clinic where uh, people who have um, no other source of medical care and are really an urgent need they can uh, uh, come in and see us on that drop-in basis and we, we have to do a certain amount of urgent care as well. As uh, moving to the new Vintners Health Center will allow us to have more examination rooms so we'll be able to see more patients. Uh, in addition, it'll allow us to grow in the future to have more providers to take care of more patients. The most pleasing thing about the Napa Valley Wine Auction, and I was the logistics chairman for the very first one, which was 21 years ago. And we absolutely are ama amazed ourselves with uh, $473,000 for local charities, and that was 21 years ago. Uh, last year, it was somewhere in the neighborhood of $8 million. Ever since I moved to Napa, one of the exceptional things about living here is that people give back at the same time that they're creating these fantastic wines, they're using those wines to create dollars for fantastic causes. An incredible thing, and it's all about Napa. Happy auction, everybody. Happy auction. Okay. Bit high, bit often. Exactly. <laughs> Pleasure. There we go. Papa il Cipollo. Now what the papa is in this soup is really not like papa papa, but the papa is a crouton, okay? It's a crouton that doesn't get just baked in and all crispy on top. It actually absorbs some of the broth and you stir it all together with the cheese and everything. So think kind of French onion soup with an Italian accent, okay? Now when you're thinking onions for this, you don't just have to use a yellow onion. Yellow onions are fine, they're great. We have spring onions, we can add some of those in. You can add some leeks, so you can have a little variety in there. You can add scallions, green onions, chives, the little baby onion, things like that. So you can do anything that you want. We have a bunch right here. All we're going to do is take a little extra virgin olive oil. Now the key to this entire soup is you having patience with this process right here. So you have a hot pan, a good amount of olive oil, and all of our onions go in. Like every time we talk about sauteing things like onions, we need salt to go in immediately. Salt goes in. What the salt does is it reaches in the onion, pulls out the moisture, because we really don't want these to caramelize and get brown at all. All we want them to do is sweat. I start with a hot pan. And I can always turn it down, but I hate waiting for pans to heat up. The great thing about this pot I'm using here is it holds its heat for a long time. So I turn them down, and we're gonna let them sweat. While these are sweating, I'm gonna get ready for my dessert. Now my dessert is very simple. We didn't have time to go to the store. We had a little dried fruit around. I mean, the normal ingredients you would have, water, cinnamon sticks, cloves. We're gonna make a little simple syrup to macerate some dried fruit in. And on top of that, add a little Zambuca. Now Zambuca is a really romantic trick. At the end of the evening, you would normally have a Zambuca in Italy. But to start with, we're gonna bring some water up to a boil. We're gonna make a little simple syrup. Pinch of salt, always with my little desserts, I like a pinch of salt. Sugar. A couple of cloves, just a couple. A cinnamon stick and some lemon zest. For the lemon, we're gonna peel back a couple of wide pieces right in there. A 
So the syrup comes up to a simmer, and then we're going to pour it over some fruit. It needs to simmer first. The onions are going to continue to sweat. Now this needs to happen about 15 or 20 minutes. So you put them in, you give them a stir, you turn them down, you grab a glass of wine, and you have a reflection of the evening. And come back to it in a few minutes. Okay, our syrup has simmered for a couple of minutes, and the lemon and the clove and the cinnamon flavor is all coming through nicely. Now all we're going to do is marinate some fruit. I love dried fruit. I don't think we eat enough dried fruit, actually, especially for dessert. We have some dried cherries, some whole dried cherries, some apricots. These are great. You know, you can make these days ahead. They only get better the more they, the more they sit. We have some pears, which are fantastic. Some nectarines, and of course raisins. These pour right over the top. And the heat in the syrup is going to just swell this dried fruit. And they're going to plump. They're going to be fantastic. Now we're going to add a little bit of lemon juice. And a little Zambuca La Romana. Mmm. Zambuca's a little anisey, like a little black anise licorice. Fantastic. Okay. Well, these macerate. My onions are continuing to saute beautifully. And we'll give them about 10 more minutes and then finish off this Papa El Chipola. I love building these soups. All the flavors begin to come together. If you see inside here, I have no color at all. Right, the soup is just caramelized and perfect. Now we're going to add a little bit of herb. And the herb of choice is sage. And I don't think we cook with sage enough. Sage is fantastic. I'm going to take a few leaves. It's an easy herb to grow. It's one of those, you can do them in Minnesota. You have to replant them every year. But all you do is mince up a little bit of sage. Now these firm herbs like this, sage and rosemary and thyme, I like them to cook in a little bit. Cook in and really release all of their oils. They're a little bit resinous, which means that uh, they can be a little strong flavored if you don't saute them for just a second. They soften up, weep into the onions, create a wonderful flavor. Now we're gonna build the next layer here. Balsamic vinegar. The balsamic vinegar, again, is going to go into the onions, sweeten them up, because balsamic vinegar is a little sweet, and reduce down and begin to add a little color and richness. These go into the already sweet onions, add a little tartness to them, and some sweetness, again, right on top. Hmm. Let me see, maybe a little vino rosso. Salud. A little red wine. Chicken broth. Now you know what? Years ago, Jacques Pepin, you know the famous chef you see him on TV? Maybe before me, after me, I don't know. I watched him make onion soup with just water. And you can make it with water. You absolutely can. It's a cold night here in Napa, so I'm going to add some chicken broth. This whole thing's only going to simmer for about 15 minutes. Now I'm going to use this little marmite. A marmite's a two-handled pottery piece. And we're going to eat out of the same one, which I think is a little more romantic. I don't know about you. Every time you have foods that Eileen and I are eating together, I love cooking off one plate. It gives us a chance to kind of stay close. We're both kind of spooning and swooning at the same time. The rest of this is going to go in the freezer for another day. Now these croutons that we have, these little panzanella croutons, very simple. 
whatever you do, do me a favor. Do not ever buy bread for croutons, right? Croutons, by definition, are meant to be made with old bread. A little, the older, I don't say the better, but they need to be a little tough and a little duro. Okay, so we're gonna take in a pan some butter. I'm gonna just leave it alone for a second, and as it heats up, it's gonna foam. As soon as that foam subsides, it will have turned light brown, which is perfect for this soup. And right in that butter is gonna go a little bit of garlic. As it gets light brown, some fresh thyme, and then in go the croutons. Toss the croutons really, really well. Lay them out on a cookie sheet, grate some Reggiano Parmigiano right over the top, and put them in a 375 degree oven until they're crispy on the outside and still soft on the inside. And you can store them, like I've done here, for another day. So I don't have to take the time to make croutons. They float right on top. And the papa part of this is that the croutons go inside the soup. And these are leftover soups usually when they call them papa, papa, chipola, papa, pomodoro. They're leftover soups that you would heat up a second day, put some bread in, let them soak for a second, and then give the whole thing a stir to bring all the flavors together in the end. Now, obviously, if you like rye bread, use rye bread. Whatever you have left, left over that's old, I'd use it. Whatever cheese you like, if you like something better than Fontina. I'm gonna put these guys under the broiler. And they're gonna get a little weepy all over those croutons. And then it's time to eat, because io fame. I can just smell the cheese under the broiler saying, I am ready to eat. Look at that. Mm. See what I was saying? They're gonna go right over the croutons like that. That is just to die for. Now these fruits, all we're gonna do is pour them in a beautiful presentation bowl. And that is it. It's time to eat. Take time to be with somebody that you love. Take time for your parents, your grandparents, your kids, aunts and uncles, anybody that you really care about. Take some wacky time at weird hours of the day when the rest of the world's asleep and you have a moment to yourself. Most importantly, take those times into your heart and be sure to share them every day. What's the right wine for a meal like this? You know what? Go back into your memory banks and, and think of a place that you traveled with your lover, your friends, whoever you're having a meal like this with, and bring something back that represents a moment in time that was particularly spectacular, a reflection on why you're together, why you enjoy each other's friendship or love. In our case, we have some Zinfandel that we happen to make. It's fantastic. It's fantastic because it represents who we are together. This wine, with our love in a dish like this, the perfect compliment. Michael Chiarello's Napa is funded by Salton, Innovative products for a healthy today and tomorrow. Bringing you the family of George Foreman's lean, mean, fat-reducing grilling machine. Salton, the secret to indoor grilling. By Sunkist, fresh citrus taste. Cooking with Sunkist throughout the day. Sunkist, our promise, your inspiration. And by Wolf, makers of ovens, cooktops, and ranges to fuel a passion for cooking. And by All Clad Metal Crafters.